Hi everyone, Johnny here working on my film study skills and today I am looking at the Pampiak vs Daniel Puertas fight from One Championship's Next Gen 3. One of the things I've been focused on in my own training is paying attention to my own positioning relative to my opponent's balance as a way to improve my vision and increase my reaction time by limiting the offensive options by my partners. As such, there were three themes to Pampiak's approach to this fight that I wanted to study further. The first was a closer look at his positional adjustments as Puertas looks to close the distance. The second was the use of his teeth to disrupt the initiation and balance of Puertas. And the third was layering the established threat of the teeth with feints and alternative offensive options. In this first sequence, I wanted to highlight Pampiak's positioning adjustments to control the distance as he retreated at a slight angle to his left. This change in positioning limited Puertas' offensive options to either the lead hand or the rear leg as the reach of his rear hand would be insufficient and the balance wouldn't be there to throw the lead leg. In this next example, Pampak made a small adjustment to his positioning towards the open side of Puertas. As a result of this, he expected Puertas to throw a lead low round and raised his right leg to check. When the lead low round wasn't thrown, Pampak threw his own rear low round, catching the inside of Puertas' thigh before shuffling backwards to evade the counter. Here is one more example of Pampiak's positioning adjustments. In this sequence, as Pampiak draws backwards, Puertas tries to cover the distance by planting his lead leg aggressively to throw the cross down the pipe. Not only does Pampiak reposition outside of the foot battle, his adjustment causes the right cross to fall short as he stops Puertas' forward momentum with a jab before landing his rear cross on a square opponent. If you would like to know more about squaring, please check out my Volkanovski vs Ortega squaring study as well. In these next sequences, I wanted to highlight Pampiak's use of the teep as this was the key weapon throughout this fight. What these sequences reinforce is the importance of the teep as a means to maintain distance, disrupt balance, attack the opponent's gas tank, and reduce their offensive options. If you can't get your positioning set to initiate, it becomes frustrating and increasingly more difficult to initiate. In these last few sequences, I wanted to provide some of the examples of how Pampiak built upon each of these layers to generate higher percentage outcomes. In this first sequence, notice how Pampiak adjusts his position as Puertas advances, firing off the teep as Puertas closes the distance. As Puertas re-attempts to establish his position to initiate, Pampiak disrupts the initiation by shifting Puertas off balance with his left round kick. In this next sequence, from later in the fight, the threat of the teep had been well established. As such, when Pampiak raises his leg, the movement carries a strong enough threat to draw a defensive response from Puertas. The first teep feint draws Puertas' lead hand down to parry the teep, whilst the second feint disrupts Puertas as he looks to step in with a lead round kick. Not happy with the current range between them, Pampiak uses his lead jab to create space as he retreats backwards one step, again utilising the lead hand to gauge the distance. Note how these minor adjustments leave the rear cross coming up short whilst Pampiak's lead hand is still within range. As Puertas' feet square up into the pocket, Pampiak feints the teep again, forcing Puertas to reset his position to not get caught off balance. As he looks to move forward to engage, Pampiak feints the teep yet again, coupling it with his lead hand to gauge the distance and making one more small adjustment to his left, causing the rear low of Puertas to miss the mark on the way through. As the threat of any weapon builds, the opponent is likely to overcompensate defensively to protect themselves. In this last sequence, we can see how these bigger defensive reactions can leave the opponent open to larger shots. There are many great things that I haven't covered in this fight, so if you haven't seen it, please make sure you check it out, and if you want to continue to join me as I work on my film study skills, please like, follow, or subscribe. Thanks for watching.